can you write a poem about this? And I said, how long? And he said, for a page. I said, oh, no, I can't. He said, tomorrow, half past five. <laughs> but because it was a subject which, which I knew about, and which I liked, I did write this. And um, if, we're, if we're in the mood when I finish it, because um, it goes on for an hour or two. What a long poetry. It's, um, I, I might play a Bowie number this one. There's nobody ever minds, because no, nobody does it. They asked me to be in a, a Bowie band once, I was going to do the show at that attitude, and I refused on the grounds that um, I was 60 at that time, I was just I was a bit too old for it. That he needed someone rather more young and listen, you know, than, than me. Well, I can do the voice. Woo! I can do the voice. Let's dance! <laughs> Okay. In Heddon Street in January, the London drizzle falls the same as softly as it did the night the camera caught in failing light. The famous phone box, current red, with Ziggy Stardust in the frame, a tinted showbiz biscuit tin which drew the viewer in. An atmosphere that seemed to speak of basement studios, upstairs flats, bell push models, queenly spats and rent collected once a week from burned out boys who's known Joe Meek. In England, done with swinging now. It's party over, drab new nights of keg beer pubs and candle stubs, the IRA and midweek subs, wildcat strikes at factory gates, an apathetic audience waits. The 60s now are firmly dead. A man from Mars arrives instead. What was it in the weather then that forged a breed of pop missiles from underfed suburban lads grown up by gas convector fires, skinny, pale, with poor dentition, actor, clothes horse, pop musician, in David's case all three in one, an odyssey which he'd begun in 60 watts of Bromley Sun. When Ziggy sang and played guitar, no one yet had gone that far. In Sutton Coldfield, Aylesbury, Bucks and Sunderland, they cheer. The brickies bellowed, hello ducks! The dads asked, is he queer? Gets harder now to tell the boys from girls with every year. The critics too blew cold and hot, but critics do, why would they not? The 70s then bedded in, in feather boa and satin flare. The suburbs sat like hammering, awaiting anthems on the air from some pied piper not yet heard to woo them with a magic word. The oddball kid, the bookish geek, the one their classmates labelled freak. Sequestered in their rooms all week, they're captivated by his eyes. You're not alone, the star man cries. Now of his band, what shall we say? The spiders, not from Mars, but Hull, were best of any of their day. If Kingston upon Hull, the name, if they don't roll off the sun, tone the same. The spiders seem to play guitars as if they really came from Mars. Now all the teenage kooks who went to hear these boys from Hull and Kent remember late in middle age how Ziggy broke the gender cage. And when we dig his records out, from hard drives, iPods, racks or shelves, and shed a tear, we find the truth is also that we mourn our youth, immortal youth, its peerless light that twinkles in the ageless night until we find how frail we are, crashing in the same old car. In Heddon Street, in January, the phone box now is gone, where fans took pictures of themselves once Ziggy had moved on. Where did they go, those slips of boys grown up with steam trains in their eyes and rockets in the Dan Dare skies above the dingy terraced streets of Britain after war? America, by any score, would seem some kind of Shangri-La. Best slap some lippy on then, kid, and bring your best guitar. America eats talent like a wolf devours a lamb with tenderising powder which can turn your mind to spam. That's when you have to wrestle with your inner Peter Pan. Then, if the boy stops swinging, you may just become a man. But even politicians cough, describing him as nice. They missed him at the kick-off, now they gag him for a slice. He helped bring down the Berlin Wall, it said, young Bromley Dave. Fashion icon, futurist, and genius, I'll behave. The ones who'll really miss him are the girls, then in their teens, recalling that one weekday night he burst onto their screens instantly monopolising all their magazines, promoting moral panic from St Moore's to Milton Keynes. 
they won't remember mourning any pop star in this way, and they won't know why they're weeping in the middle of the day. He was youth, and he was beauty, he was talented and clever, so stunningly original, and they thought he'd live forever. In Hedden Street, in January, the sun falls on a plaque like an actor, taking encores in a Mayfair cul-de-sac, and there, beside the doorway, are his flowers in a stack, but Ziggy Stardust's never coming back and all the worldly traffic may resume its migraine rumble, while all the Babylonian showbiz rumour mills will crumble. Let legend be his epitaph. The lily needs no gilding. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr Bowie has left the building. Woo!